Gail Simone here with us today. I know her from Miko, who is the co-producer of The Missed Appointment. Yeah, Miko actually just directed my last music video, Campfire, which was produced by Polyvisual, the same people directing <laughs> this video. <Yeah. laughs> so Ariel is a music artist. She's also a visual artist. She designs and she's pretty much a creative artist all around. They would call me a renaissance woman. So I'm curious, and I'm sure everybody else is curious, how do you stay creative? Where do you find your inspiration? That is always, always changing for me. But um, where do I find my inspiration? I feel like most of the times when I am inspired, it's usually when I am finally getting myself outside of the house. Mm -hmm. And I'm um, going outside and just remembering how simple life is and just knowing that like I can find inspiration in like the leaves and the trees, all the different colors that are outside and just watching people interact with one another and yeah kind of bringing out like the humanistic part of like right just creating. actually living my life yeah and not just trying to create and just living and experiencing as a human being is something that's already truly inspiring. So yeah. I try to remember that, just remember how, how simple life is. Do you think nature is a big part of being a creative artist or like being in touch with nature? For me individually, yes. I know mm -hmm. some people can't stand being outside, which <laughs> is probably for some other reasons that probably don't have to do with actually being outside. But for me, um, going outside plays a, a huge role in me just staying clear and me realizing that, you know, like the earth itself is mm -hmm. here for me. And mm -hmm. I'm like also here to work in tandem with the earth. You know, it's That's like, because yeah. what we're made up out of beyond matter, like we're made up out of energy and like electrons and whatnot. And us actually being in touch with the earth and earthing mm -hmm. or grounding is what it's called. Is like, we're actually balancing our electrons and letting the earth take away certain energies from us and allowing us to be open to absorb certain energies from the earth as well. That reminds me of this um, theory about why we're so, um, why we seek to be close to a large body of water, like the ocean or the beach. And it reminds us of being inside our mother's womb, which is very nurturing, very, you know, loving, and we feel secured and taken care of. So in some sense, I would say like, that's another reason why we have this like instinct calling to nature. Like I think right. that's important because it literally like clears our energy and keeps our energy moving, making sure that we're not stagnant and like have no blockages and just keeps it moving. Yeah, it's really important for creative artists to have that continuous energy flow. What do you do when there's a blockage in that system? When I have any sort of creative block, what I've realized up to now, because I'm learning a lot about myself, mm -hmm. I'm 26 years old and I'm still learning a lot. But what I've learned thus far is that when I have a creative block, I can't force it. Right. Like I can't force myself to create anything. That's something that I usually run to do because I can separate myself from like what I'm going through versus where I really should be or like what's on the other side. I don't take that time to actually go through it. But like, so when I have a creative block, Mm -hmm. I stop everything I'm doing and just make sure I'm not trying to force myself to create. I make sure that I go hang out with friends. Yeah, That's super yeah. important. That's one thing that's really important to me is making sure that I realize, you know, I'm not the only person, one, who's going through this. Because yeah, yeah. it's usually like I can count on my hand, maybe just one hand, how many other friends who are like always going through the same thing you're going through. You know, mm -hmm. you know you've always had a friend like where you keep something to yourself. But you, know you don't really person, like reach yeah. out. And then when you finally do, your friend's like, yes, yeah. you're going through the same thing. Yeah. And the more that it's uh, talked about and the more that it's like shared with people that you also love the most, the more it becomes like less stigmatized and the more you right. can openly actually talk about exactly. it and be honest. Yeah. And then you can get through it that much quicker. Yeah. And it's like a win-win. Yeah. You can help that person also to get through it. So. Right. Because it's important knowing that like there's times when you're not going to be creating right. and that's okay. That's the most important thing about that is understanding that's all right. I can't always create and create because at a point in time, you're going to start to wonder like, well, where am I pulling this creativity from? Like, where am I creating from? If mm -hmm. I haven't been living my life, if I haven't been going through X, Y, and Z, like the darkest moments will be the moments that inspire the most beautiful creations mm -hmm. that you'll ever think of or you'll mm -hmm. ever be able to get your hands on. So yeah, when I have a creative block, I have to let it happen. 
Yeah. You know, I have to let it happen. Analyze where I am right now, mm -hmm. why I can't create. And like I said, just go like relate to other people. Yeah, like whatever you're going through, we know that there's an expiration date to it. Like it's right. only a phase. And you can learn to either, like you said, like resist it, which you shouldn't, <laughs> kind of flow with it and you don't necessarily have to embrace it, but at least be aware that it's existing and it's also going to end. Right. Yeah, respecting that it's there for a reason. Yeah. Do you think that people who are creating and producing a lot of things for the world to see are more likely to be in a state of, you know, depression or loneliness or that dark place? Hmm. Well, I can only speak for myself and how I've experienced life as a mm -hmm. creative, which I am, and I'm usually kind of depressed sometimes. Yeah. So I would say, I don't know, I feel like when you're a creative at all times, you're, you're like literally making babies yeah. all the time. It's like boop, boop, boop. You're just making all these children. It's like sometimes you don't actually come back to some of them. Right. Like some you put more work into the other. I don't know, I feel like it sets you up to you're kind of putting yourself in this place where you can be judged. Granted, mm -hmm. that's like a whole nother spectrum to where a whole nother mental game to where you care about what people actually think about your work, mm -hmm. which goes back to what we were saying about like being child, childlike with your right. creativity yeah. and knowing that, you know, you're creating only for yourself. But it's super weird because yeah. it's like creatives. Again, you start creating because it's a place of liberation for you. And um I don't know, as you get older, it just turns into something that can just be... Yeah, you become more mm -hmm. conscious of like how people will receive it. Like, and almost that obsessive. Stops. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. all right, you, what happened to the time where you were just like doing this because it was fun? Right, yeah. So I feel like we, we could be, yeah. be quicker to get depressed just because you have such an audience. How do you um, keep your mental health in check? One thing that I like to do to keep my mental health in check Personally, one thing that helps me out the most is working out. One, it gets me outside. Yeah. I don't like to run in a gym, like on a treadmill. I think that's kind of dumb. That's really bad for so, your knees. Right, and <laughs> yeah. it's bad for your knees. And actually, running on the pavement can be bad for your knees and your shins too, because I have messed up oh, knee yeah. and some messed up shins. Mm. But anyways, so I like to um, just get outside and to do something that's working on my cardiovascular system. Yeah. Getting me breathing and getting me actually Getting your lungs creating, expanding like, and yeah. I'm actually creating new blood. Yeah. Like this is actually fresh blood. Like that's the whole thing. I think it's, maybe I'm kind of a nerd, but I think it's cool. I think it's really awesome how the body's set up yeah. and how it's supposed to work. And that at the end of it all, this is like the optimal health of the body yes, is like yeah. literally just you as a being beyond just your physical existence. You just become like this healthy, beautiful, illuminating being. So it's like, Again, I like to get some fresh oxygen, get my body working, giving it something to do, making sure my heart is working and it's mm -hmm. healthy. Yeah. And like, also, I've been working on my lower abs and my back. And yeah. it's like, I don't know, it just feels good on my posture. And I can actually feel my body. And I'm like, ooh. When you're standing straight, your chest is more forward. So like you can expand your lungs further. Therefore, you can inhale more air. And that oxygen that you get can enhance, you know, your red blood cells, like exactly. you mentioned. I wish everyone could be like as geeked out about this sort of <laughs> stuff as me, because that's the reason. Like I have such simple reasons as to why I do things, but mm -hmm. it's like, it's because life is so simple, but it's like that intricate at the same time. It's also beautiful. It's beautiful. It's intricacy of it. I think that's cool. Yeah. I'm not a nerd. That's good, yeah. That's it's so a great. constant, um, practice you don't have to do it every day but you know when you try that's good yeah like when you are actually trying and that's like a whole another thing is um just being gentle with yourself mm -hmm. realizing you're not just gonna boop and just hop Change right on to yeah like no it's not it's not gonna happen i have to be gentle with myself i have to learn how to allow myself to go through these emotions and right. respect them respect why they're here mm -hmm. where they came from right. And you can kind of make the experience better by doing things that are important to you, like taking care of your body. And yeah. like what you said, going outside, being in touch with nature. Also, I think cultivating gratitude is an important thing to keep in mind. Gratitude is, um, that's first and foremost. Yep. As soon as I wake up, 
I'll have a prayer and it'll just be for simple things. Just mm, gratitude is important. <laughs> it, it makes you, it reminds you that you are important. Yeah. It reminds you that you're taken care of um, and that you're seen. You know, I'll wake up and be like, oh, of course, thank you, God or universe, whatever mm-hmm. you want to call it. Thank you for waking me up mm-hmm. because I see each day as like a new chance in a new time for me to do better than what I did. Like I actually, I learned so much in a day, especially about myself and like um, how to continue to do what, like I feel like I'm here on this earth to do and to serve others and to serve myself. I'm like, yo, I know so much than I knew yesterday. Thank you for this earth and this whole ecosystem and like this body that works for me. Like how awesome all of this works for the betterment of me and like everybody else around me. I'm really glad that you brought up gratitude because a lot of people think that self-care is just limited to working out and eating the right foods when in fact like gratitude can actually be a foundation to your self-care practice. Yeah, gratitude is something that's definitely an integral process and like a part of you just letting go and realizing that everything really is here to work in your favor and to work for you. And um a lot of artists in general, a lot of creatives, I've noticed, because that's all I'm around, but it mm-hmm. seems like a lot of creatives don't know when to take that time to themselves yeah. to just be grateful and to just focus on taking care of themselves and like, that's it. Yeah. We often forget that like vacation is a thing. You need to, <laughs> like granted, even if you're not working a nine to five or if you mm-hmm. are, it's like vacation is there for a reason. You need a you break. Need it, yeah. You definitely have to take a break and I feel guilty about it you're smart for taking that break. Yeah. Like that's what's going to help build your endurance in the long run. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna make sure you don't burn out and crash and end up, oh, why am I like this? Why am I not creating? Like, you know, yeah. yeah, Throwing a tantrum as to why you're not like equal. You threw threw it off, that's why. There needs to be a balance between the two. Yeah. Working and, and resting. Thanks, Ariel, for being with us today. No, thank you, Daisy. This was awesome. I definitely enjoyed this. I really had a great conversation with you. And thanks for the tips for, you know, everyone to now. Of course. Please check out Ariel Simone online. She creates a lot of really cool stuff. She produces, she raps, she creates furniture, and they're all available online. So we'll link it down below. And thank you guys for watching. My missed appointment would have to be just hanging out with friends more. I don't do that as often as I should, and then I find myself caught in a cycle of feeling like I care for everybody and nobody cares about me. Ah, blah, 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 blah. And that's just, that, that's stupid. And there's so many people here who care about me. And actually, I'm extremely proud of the family that I've been able to build since I've moved to Atlanta. And just the sort of people I've been able to gravitate towards me. And um, hmm. it says a lot about me, it says a lot about them. I need to hang out with my friends more. I need to stop isolating myself. When I get in my downswings, I'm just like, mm. I just get in my shell.